uh, in, the, in the last 12 months or so, I have been working at least 12 of our key customers and trying to understand how cloud is being used across uh, in different industries. Uh, being part of the engineering team in IBM Cloud, I get to see the architecture and the implementation of both Cloud Foundry as well as the IKS, the container services. And also, I'm fortunate to have a close association and a part of the open community, like um, I'm the co-chair for uh, Istio Workgroup, and then I'm closely working with uh, Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. So I could get to see three different point of views when it comes to cloud and Cloud Foundry. A customer perspective, an engineering perspective, and then we get to see what's happening in the open community. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Surya Dugirala. I'm an STSM with Watson and Cloud platform and engineering guild leader in IBM Cloud. So today, we're going to talk about uh, three different things. We're going to talk about how containers evolved and what are the current pain points that uh, customers are seeing and what we are working on to alleviate those pain points. And also, we're going to talk about uh, some futuristic stuff, you know, how the architectures are changing, uh, especially Cloud Foundry, and how these three major open co cloud community, uh, communities, like the Kubernetes, Istio, and Cloud Foundry, which are going in parallel, how they're actually going to be merging and actually going to uh, integrate in future. Right. So we're going to talk about the current design, and next we'll get into some futuristic stuff. Uh, there are many projects that I'll be talking about today. Um, and in fact, uh, there are uh, many breakout sessions uh, that will go more actually into, that, uh, into those uh, specific projects. So if you look at these three projects, the open cloud community ones, the Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes and Istio. So you might have heard about these things time and time again. So we're going to talk about how these three within the Cloud Foundry, they're going to work together. So before we get to that, I want to just go down the memory lane. When this whole container stuff started, because we always talk about containers. So when these containers, these, these are not new, if you look at that, in, it all actually started with the CH root in Unix. You can call that as the starting point for this whole container journey, because that's where you, know, you could get the resource isolation concept that was born. But officially, like you can see in 2008, you have those Linux containers. That's where we really talked about containers. And then if you look at Cloud Foundry, when we have announced this around 2011, the Warden containers that are part of the um, uh, Cloud Foundry in 2011, then from that Warden container point of view, then we moved to support the Garden and Docker side. How we went to that? In 2013, Docker containers were born. And then 2014, you have the Garden Linux containers because that's where we were actually going from DES to Diego in Cloud Foundry. And of course, 2015, that's when Kubernetes was announced. And 2016, you have, of course, again, 2015, you have the Open Container Initiative, and then RunC started there. And then we started supporting that in 2016 with the Garden RunC. And then if you look at 2017, that's where uh, IBM, Google, and Lyft announced the project Istio. And now, in 2018, we are talking about how these three projects are going to work together. Of course, there are many, many engineering issues that all these three communities are working in parallel. Uh, when it comes to Cloud Foundry, of course, there are many customers, but we still are working to harden the platform based on the customer input, on the performance, scalability, stability, resiliency issues. 
and also uh, the multiple integration projects that are going on um, that's also happening in the Cloud Foundry world. When it comes to Istio, Istio being very young, um, it is still just uh, started last year, um, we have gotten very good momentum for a year-old project. Um, and you can clearly see we need to harden the mesh because the potential is really high. Uh, there are a lot of people in the community working on hardening the mesh, uh, especially performance and scalability aspects. And then uh, we have announced the minimal Istio. Like, let's say if you don't want to use all the features of Istio, um, you can actually uh, deploy a different uh, through Helms, right? Uh, a minimalistic uh, footprint of Istio. And Kubernetes, as you can see, in Kubernetes we have, of course, it's a very nice um, orchestrator and scheduler platform, but we still have some issues, especially if you look at the scheduler. Some of you might have uh, seen there needs to be some more intelligence put into the default scheduler, because uh, it cannot really identify an unstable cluster and correct it to become a stable cluster. Uh, so imbalancing, imbalances in the cluster and those things, the default scheduler is not able to um, adjust them. So there is a project uh, under the, uh, the scheduler's track in Kubernetes called the descheduler. So what we're working there is to see whether we can actually dynamically adjust and dynamically move some of the parts to those nodes where you have resources, whereas um, you are just bottlenecked on a specific node, right? Things like that, we are working on the descheduler side. Uh, and then, of course, the new things like the uh, SNI, like the CSI, like uh, cloud storage interface and stuff, right? So there are a lot of stuff um, in each of these three cloud, compu uh, cloud um, uh, communities. Uh, still, they're working to make them even better. Now let's look at the Cloud Foundry for, for a moment. Cloud Foundry, even though it's being embraced and used in multiple um, production environments, and in fact, uh, I myself worked on uh, the healthcare, banking, and uh, some consumer electronics and uh, different areas. But these are some of the things that uh, really some of you, you might have seen. When it comes to routing, uh, you may see long tail latencies if you're not using the uh, Go Router's Keep Alive. In, when it comes to networking, uh, because you know in networking, uh, if you have uh, microservices, let's say you have two tier or three tier microservices, then you may experience significant latencies, increased latencies, if you are not using it container to container. <clears throat> and then when it comes to build packs, of course, you, you might have seen when you do a CF push, you may see a sudden spike in CPU. And that's mainly because the way the current build pack mechanism, how the file system works, it's a flat file system. And then you also might have seen CPU sharing issues, like the algorithm, the default uh, CPU algorithm. Uh, sometimes if you have a contended environment, you may see some staging failures because you don't have enough resources. And then, of course, the, the garden doesn't have a, a concept of a pod so that you can have multiple uh, containers in a pod or, uh, like, like uh, uh, Kubernetes has. So you can inject a sidecar, which is essential for supporting Istio. So that's another drawback. And then you have uh, uh, now, as many of you might have seen, right? You know, if you're using both Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes together, you will have multiple scheduler issues. And then you have the service mesh support. Of course, the lots and lots of people when they move to the microservices. As a developer, I don't want to get into any of those uh, traffic management, security management, certificate management, all those things. If somebody else can do that for me, then I can focus more 
of my energy on my industry-specific, domain-specific um, uh, problem solving rather than you know, handling these plumbing things. That's where the service mesh support is really uh, important. So we are working, and I'm going to talk about you know, what are the things that we are working here uh, to resolve the current design's pain points and how we're going to actually get to the next uh, architecture uh, to solve some of these other uh, problems. Yeah, you can see this here, the long tail latency. Um, we have run some healthcare application. And then we have seen this. Uh, if you look at the long tail latency, for some of you who may not know about that, long tail latency is a, if you look at the gap between an average response time versus the 99th percentile, if that is significantly higher, as you can see on your left hand side, uh, the max latency and the 99th percentile uh, is much, much higher than an average uh, response time there. And that's main, mainly because of the go router's um, inability to have the keep alive to the backend. So once you enable, because we have that feature now, which is not on by default, but if you enable that, then you can actually significantly reduce that long tail latency. So this is one of the things from a routing side which we have worked on. And then uh, the second feature which we have is the container-to-container -container networking. So most of you are familiar, like if service A is calling service B in a microservice um, uh, application, then service C is that invocation, it has to go all the way out to the proxy and then gets into the go router, and then the go router will go to the um, service. It may be in the same D, uh, Diego cell but still, it can't talk to each other. But once you have the container-to-container -container networking enabled, you don't need to go all the way, and actually you can reduce those hops. And that's where you will see significant improvements um, in the latency. Again, you can see some proof here. Uh, this is a, a pharmacy application from healthcare. Um, you can see the default without container-to-container. -container. And then you see enabling the container-to-container, -container, you see almost two and a half 2.5x reduction in latency. And you can see the same thing with online banking application, too. Uh, significantly, it's reducing from 329 milliseconds to 278. So these are some of the things that we have introduced, and we have optimized uh, these features. But these features are not there on by default. So if you are a cloud provider, you have to make those things available. The third one about the C CF push. If you look at this, uh, you can see the Java application, Node application, Ruby application, right? You know, all of them, they manifest uh, differently from a CPU spike, how much it is. From a Java, normally you see a much bigger spike because Java uh, being a little bit heavier compared to Node and other uh, programming models. The reason why you see this big of a spike is because your droplet size is much bigger. You have a flat file system, so you don't have a layered file system like, like Docker. So each time when you push an app and you have that uh, Docker, uh, you, you have the droplet size, uh, you need to do that uh, zip and unzip, all those things that, uh, which are highly CPU intensive operations. That will um, maybe four or five seconds, um, but you will be impacted with those things. How are we fixing that? Um, you might have seen the, you know, Jules talk about the OCI build packs. The OCI layer is actually addressing that. Basically, this OCI build packs, what it does is it basically changes the file system from a flat file system to a layered file system like Docker. So as you can see in this, so you have um, a much smaller droplet so you don't need to spend that much um, in, in a compression and uncompress, uh, and the CPU spikes will be significantly lower. So these are some of the existing pain points and with the current uh, design and architecture. But now let's look at, uh, as most of you have seen, now Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, they're actually working together. There are multiple projects that are going on here. And uh, you can see there are at least five of these projects, um, mainly led by you know, different vendors here. 
Uh, the first one is the CFE or the Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment that uh, Tammy mentioned uh, this morning. And then you have SAP's uh, you know, CF Kubernetes integration scenarios. And then, of course, the Irene project. Uh, I will touch a little bit on that. Um, so that's uh, another thing that where you will try to replace the Diego scheduler at the application level, not at the container level. And then you just use Cube instead of uh, Diego. And then, of course, you have other projects like Cubo and uh, these things, right? So wh what exactly is the CFCE or CFEE, right? The Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment. So basically what we are doing is actually we are dividing this whole as a, as a isolated segments. What we are trying to do is we have a control plane and a data plane. Control plane has all the, it's running on a, in a cube cluster. It's, uh, it's having all the CF specific, like maybe go router or you know um, uh, the cl uh, cloud controller and all these different CF specific, fabric specific things will be deployed on the control plane, and then your applications residing on the Diego cells that will be on the data plane. So you have a nice isolation there, and uh, all of these things are actually running on a cube cluster, and. Uh, the, the beauty of this is you will be running on that. At the same time, you have access to all kinds of services that are available in the marketplace. It may be a blockchain or AI or IoT. So you have uh, the nice orchestration layer that's handled by the cube. But at the same time, you have uh, integration to all kinds of services there. And you have the concept of, you know, you can use the Helm concept. So it's like kind of a first step towards um, a, a nice integration between um, Cloud Foundry and um, Kubernetes. Uh, this is a, just a dashboard. Um, you can see uh, that the application level, like the container level, and also the pod level, uh, resource usage and, uh, resource usage and uh, all the stuff, you can actually see it from there. So now let's talk about you know, what kind of problems from an engineering point of view you will see. Now you will get into nested container issue. Then you may see, OK, so now I have the garden containers within the Docker container. So how am I going to scale? Do I have any kind of issues here? So all those things you will get into with this architecture that we have here. Because now the way we are trying to do is we're going to, have, we're going to limit one Diego cell per node. So it is actually a, basically a, a pod. So that has uh, um, other parts like the monitoring, like Prometheus pod or FluentD pod. But within that Docker container or the, um, the Diego cell pod, you will have multiple, maybe up to 80, or based on how big your node is. You can go up to 80 or 100 uh, garden containers. So when you have this kind of a nested, so do we have um, any performance issues or scalability issues? That's exactly the, the first thing that we looked at. So we have a direct comparison of the IKS. You're running the same application, a network intensive application, on the Kubernetes platform in pods. And then you do the same thing on CIFI, like Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment. Of course, now you're running those applications in garden containers in the Diego pod, right? So you can see the performance-wise, you don't see any extra tax, of course, a little bit, but you don't have that additional scalability issue or anything on the, uh, uh, on, on the CFE nested container architecture. And uh, you can also see the scalability. Um, you can see that both the Java application as well as a Node application, you can clearly see um, how elastic and how you can actually scale those applications even with this nested, nested container architecture. Now, CFI gives you a Kubernetes integration at, at the lower level, right? Because you know, you are, you're building your Cloud Foundry on top of a Kube cluster. 
But at the application level, you still use Diego scheduler. So now you have two schedulers. You have, at the container level, one uh, cube scheduler. At the application level, you have the Diego scheduler. Uh, well, that's, you may see some problems later on. So the project called Irene is actually mainly work, we are working on that. And uh, Simon is going to be actually talking about this later. Um, so you can see the idea behind this Irene project is because CF is pretty good for dev experience. So we'd like to keep the, the best of CF part. And then Kubernetes is a lot of community behind it. It's a, it's a nice scheduler. So let's keep Kubernetes for scheduling. And then keep the um, DevOps and uh, you know, developer, developer experience with the cloud controller and CF push and all that stuff with CF. So if you combine the, these two things, right, that's where um, this Irene thing will come. So how it looks like. If you look at this, on the, on the left-hand side, you can clearly see that the Cloud Foundry, as we talk about the CFE, like the Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment, where you have the IaaS, and then you have Cube Cluster on top, and then you have the Cloud Foundry stack. If you have CFE plus Irene, then what you're doing, those stars you can see, where you're replacing the garden scheduler um, and the garden cells. Uh, you, may not, you don't have that. Now you will actually, when you do a CF push, now it will be pushed to a cube scheduler. So you have a Kubernetes, and then instead of the Diego cells, you have this irony. So this is the direction that um, in future we may see Cloud Foundry. So for more details, actually there are some sessions. Um, you know, today at uh, 3.50, we have a panel discussion where Simon and the uh, rest of the folks are going to actually talk in detail on this. And then tomorrow, we have two more sessions. Um, of course, the CFI uh, from Simon and Tammy. And then another thing um, tomorrow again. So now we talked about uh, Kubernetes. We talked about uh, integration um, of Kubernetes both at the container level as well as the application level. Now let's talk about Istio, right? As I mentioned, Istio is mainly the one that's actually getting uh, traction because, um, to, to put it bluntly, um, it will make me as a developer, I don't need to care anything except my application because everything else will be handled by Istio. So what exactly is Istio, right? So with Istio, you get all these different qualities of service with microservices. You'll get intelligent routing and load balancing. You get the resiliency that you need uh, for microservices. Then you can enforce the fleet-wide policy enforcement. You can get all kinds of telemetry and reporting you'll get. And then between service to service, you know, authentication, security management, because it has its own CA provider, you'll get the certificates. And for an application as a developer, I don't need to worry about the rate limiting. I don't need to worry about connection timeouts and all that stuff. Everything will be given by the service mesh. That's exactly the reason why Istio is getting actually more and more popular, because everything else taken care by that. Uh, so as a developer, I'll be just focusing on my domain-specific uh, stuff. So again, Istio has two things. You have the control plane and the data plane. So control plane has the pilot, mixer, and the uh, certificate management, the Istio auth. And then uh, the data plane has the intelligent uh, proxies uh, as sidecars to each of your services. And then your service doesn't know, um, you know where the other service that it calls uh, reside because the sidecar, the intelligent uh, Envoy proxy, will handle all that uh, thing for you. And then pilot will control um, the sidecar. So you can actually, through configuration, you can actually um, adjust how you would like to have the traffic management and everything, like canary testing, A-B testing, and all that stuff. So when it comes to, there are some um, work items, and people are working on how we can get Istio and Cloud Foundry work together. But the, the main thing is Cloud Foundry has the highly opinionated um, and simple way of handling things. That's the main positive point for Cloud Foundry. We don't want to lose that. 
And um, the Cloud Foundry, again, remains the optimized for developer velocity, right? And we want to keep all these major design points um, while we are trying to integrate these things. And again, complexity of maintaining, uh, because um, you know, we don't want to lose all the, the control that we have for the operators. Um, and we should have the ability to control the service mesh resources. All these things are the des major design points that we're actually trying to keep in mind when we look at the integration uh, of Istio with Cloud Foundry. So where exactly are we trying to integrate Cloud Foundry and Istio? There are four points. Uh, there is a north-south traffic and east-west traffic. So north-south is like when you go through the go router. So there is a plan to even replace go router with Envoy, which is the um, ingress controller, that ingress gateway that comes with Istio. And then for east-west, um, you need to have that sidecar kind of a concept, but that's where like app-to-app -app communication and all that stuff the east-west traffic, uh, we want to have an integration point there as well. And then when it comes to security, because Istio handles a lot of security, so, so we need to integrate uh, with UAA for the OAuth and OIDC. So these are the four touch points that we are trying to get this integration going. But again, um, because Cloud Foundry didn't have that concept of pod, um, so uh, you might have heard from Dr. Zoles about um, you know, the P's, which are like kind of uh, a sidecar pattern for our garden containers now, so that you can have uh, the Envoy intelligent proxies attached to the services. So this is um, the work that the containers uh, tribe uh, did recently to support this. So what are the risks of uh, embracing Istio into Cloud Foundry? Like, you know, because the first and foremost is the performance and scalability. Because we have um, hundreds, if not thousands, of routes, so we want to make sure that um, Istio's pilot can handle and scale as we integrate that. And then we have to balance the desire to do the enhancements, because now we are getting into a completely two different, because Istio itself is a very active, dynamic, um, open source community. So we want to make sure that we have minimal enhancements to the Cloud Foundry. And uh, to keep the currency is also going to be a challenge, because as I said, like a four touch points. So there are multiple um, teams within Cloud Foundry that uh, they need to really uh, keep the currency when we talk about Istio and uh, Cloud Foundry together. Um, luckily, um, of course, I'm, as I said, uh, we have taken the performance and scalability things into consideration um, as um, I'm, I'm leading the jointly uh, that work group in Istio. So we have a few issues already opened. We are working on pilot scalability issues apart from the other 13 things that we are actually working right now. So Istio. Um, as we speak, is getting optimized in multiple fronts, right from telemetry to cache management, buffer management, pilot, ingress gateway, everything is being worked as, uh, a, a, as we speak. There is a SWAT team that I'm leading. Uh, we have uh, a work item that's going on. Actually, you can see uh, all the stuff that's going on here in those links. Um, and also, to make it easy uh, for Istio performance, um, we are integrating multiple dashboards uh, that will make it easy for uh, anybody using Istio to understand the resource requirements. As you can see here, we recently we have integrated this. Um, how many vCPUs you need for 1,000 transactions per second um, for a specific uh, Istio component? In this case, you can see Istio proxy, Istio telemetry, um, and uh, you know, um, the policies, everything, right? So we are making it easy. Uh, as I said, Istio is a very dynamic community. It's getting de um, developed and deployed and optimized as we speak. Um, for more details, I think we have uh, some sessions. Uh, Shannon and um, um, Aaron, are, Aaron are going to be uh, talking about uh, like 2.30 today. And uh, we have uh, office hours and also Istio Birds of Feather uh, sessions you'll get there. 
Um, again, this is like if you want to put all of these together, like you know, Watson, blockchain, Kubernetes, serverless, Cloud Foundry, everything together, uh, there is an app. Um, you can actually see that Cloud Coins. Uh, you can go and uh, download it. And that will give you a, a perspective of how all of them working together and giving you uh, an excellent um, user experience. So with that, uh, I'll complete this session. Any questions? Or if not, thank you.